you know it's not your typical Guy Ritchie film when there's a character named Bullet and it's not the one played by Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and this week I'm joined by Baffle Gabbers, Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. Ian Whittington. I like Chick fil A. And Danae Hughes. Uh, joining us as well. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coming from a compound. Oh, wait, no, sorry. We write for Cinema Sins and TV Sins and do other various things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. Uh, yeah, Danae's back with us for the episode uh, this week. Ian. Is and with I'm, us and likes Chick Fil A, which they don't have where you are. No, yet. we do so not have Chick Fil A. What does all this mean? We're in the We're same, in the same room. room. Yeah. Woo. Love That's same room podcast, uh, yeah. especially on a podcast with you know people in not only various parts of the United States of America, but also somewhat the mm-hmm. world. Who is across a lot of water. Yeah, we'll see if you guys still like each other in three weeks. Yes. It's true. Oh, I know it's we true. were not. <laughs> there's, there's signs already that this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I love Aaron too much and it's just not reciprocating. Uh, boy, that is not true. That is, there's so much reciprocation. It is it's uncomfortable gross. how much it reciprocation there is. You'll have to tell me why that you're not allowed to leave your room after nine o'clock at the Dicer's house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm really yeah. curious what that's about. So every to house has showering. rules. Yeah. <laughs> Rule, judge me. Then he just looks at us and has to shower. <laughs> it's a lot, <laughs> but it's really adorable too. Yeah. What yeah. did we like? Did we immediately? Did we? Well, we, we were explaining something to tonight. We weren't mansplaining, but we were explaining no. something in a very like he did one sentence, I did the next, and Danae's just like backwards and forwards. Literally, just like, Who like am I talking watching to? you know tennis, just back and yeah. forth the two of them, and they were like almost one-upping punning each other yeah oh you guys actually finished each other's sentence mm-hmm. multiple times in this it was as if you were one person yeah and i just well, sort of know. sat back and was like this is life no or mm-hmm. at least while you're visiting i want to tell jonathan uh jonathan doesn't know this story i uh, tell you as well but uh when uh we picked up ian from the airport no no he uh was coming towards the car and we cranked living in america and, uh, <laughs> As he was coming, it was either yeah. that or holding up our phones within your eyes. Uh, from nice, Peter Gabriel. I was nice. like, what so. kind of a dick just blasts out really <laughs> loud music outside of a? Oh, that's my ride. <laughs> that's right. That's have, right. Have you seen Rocky Four? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we are excited uh, to be together in the same room. Hope you are excited for another Behind the Sins podcast. We're going to take a look at uh, all the stuff that's happening in the Sins world. So let's get started with the Sins side scoop. What's he building in there? Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. We're going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we are sending in general. Kick it off in commercial sins world with Pepsi. Better with Pepsi. It's just that simple. Just that simple. It works. Is it? Is it better with Pepsi? Uh, False advertising, but yeah. Uh, this was an Atkinson script. So, what did we think about this one? Uh, Danae, why don't you kick us off? What a delight. <laughs> <laughs> there were several in here, and I didn't know who had written it. And I was like, just really enjoying myself. The first one that got me was the celery one. Just like a little, a quick, like, <laughs> also celery. Celery. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But then I lost my shit at the uh, Pepsi. It's your punishment for choosing Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a hilarious Aww. way of thinking about it because I really detest Applebee's. So I felt like, you know, sometimes there's sins when you just are like, yeah, they deserved Get that it. one. Yeah. And that was one of them. But then there's the entire rant, like the that's what I like rant at the end of this one. And it was just, it's just fun to see Chris unload and unleash yeah. on, a, on a Pepsi commercial. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a Pepsi fan. Um, I think Jonathan, you you are. You like Pepsi, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it is funny because no matter who's writing, whether we like Pepsi or not, we tear Pepsi apart. Like it's it's just kind of one of those. I mean, to be fair, we probably tear Coke apart too. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> is it the Nickelback of Coke? Of, of something Coke like that. Aww. Something like that. Poor yeah. Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> we did quite. You have to save the Pepsi can. We've done quite a few Pepsi that, commercials so. though, right? Because we did the we did that um, the Kardashian one. Yeah, they Jenner, seem to Jenner. do yeah. the more epic. We did the clown. Yeah, the Chainsaw Clown was Pepsi, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah that was weird. Pepsi wow. Max. Yeah, nobody, Pepsi Max. nobody 
heard my recycling joke, and that's okay. That's that. But, but you, you know have what? To the keep audience the audience did. Yeah, to recycling. get the nickel back. So. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, that was good. I'm so mad I missed no, that. No, no, that just I just don't recycle. I've never recycled, so I just didn't get it. So I'm, 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 I'm horrible. I that's so you good. We're about to say it just wasn't funny. <laughs> no, that too. Fair enough. Yeah. Either yeah. would have been fair. Never, tried, would have been never fair. tried to get a nickel back for a can, so I didn't get that. Like Jonathan's like, I just didn't care about that. That's yeah, why. Yeah, this is yeah. Like, Do you get a nickel like, can? Uh, actually, in Michigan, you get ten cents. Uh, oh my god! I'm but here's the thing: it's a deposit that's built into the price. So basically, they put a ten cent deposit in all the cans and plastic bottles or whatever, and then you return them, you get that tenants back. Nice. So it's a way to encourage recycling without ever actually having incentivize nice. people financially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want, want to save the planet? We'll pay you to do it. We will literally we, pay you. We to will do pay it. you your own money to yeah. do it. Uh, the uh, the other one I wanted to mention in here was uh, even under optimal conditions, you're only drinking Pepsi because someone dared you to. So <laughs> why make the experience harder? Uh, that one made me laugh quite a bit. Jonathan, uh, any thoughts from you on this one? I mean, it was it was very funny. You guys have mentioned all. I did have the other tagline written down though. Pepsi, we set fire to Michael Jackson. We set fire to oh. Michael Jackson in the '80s. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was rough and funny. Oh man, uh, so good. But uh, and then I also wrote down eating spicy wings in an office cubicle. That just that actually was like, yeah, why would you do that? So yeah, or yeah. just wings in general. Like that's very, not that's not cubicle food. Yeah, it's not cubicle food. Yeah. And very valid points. There was no graveyard of bones. No meaning that it went. It was just very well thought out because mm-hmm. that does you have stink. To, you have to. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't be the one stinking up an office. Like you don't eat fish in an office. Like there, there's just certain things. <laughs> You can't do, especially right. when there's like a hundred of you all jammed in there. Yeah. Usually, eat in your car like a grown up. Buffalo Wild Wings commercials are usually so. It's just such a messy product, and it was like a double product in one, like two commercials in one, a pairing Buffalo Wild Wings and Pepsi. It did make me crave Buffalo Wings. So. Oh, wings are good. That did happen. They I don't were extra juicy. They looked really fluidy. Oh, the wings mm-hmm. with the sauce. Yeah, fluid yeah. wings. Yeah, yeah, fluid wings. Uh, Ian, some thoughts? Um, yeah, by far, you've said all of the, the great ones. By far and away was the Pepsi. We set fire to Michael Jackson in the 80s. That was mm-hmm. so dark. I did not expect it, and I loved it. <laughs> it was so good. Because it's like, no, we're not saying anything wrong here. They did. They yeah, literally did. Really they happened. 100%. <laughs> that happened. Uh, and all this did was make me hungry for wings, um, which this is advertising the wrong product. Like I didn't come away from this wanting a Pepsi. I wanted... I wanted wings, and this lady well, to be I mean, punished. And if you're yeah. eating, if you're eating something spicy, like soda, is one of the one of the worst That's things horrible. you could milk. drink. Yeah, yeah. Give me yeah. some milk, or just water, or yeah. anything. That's yeah. not soda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That is not, no, that's not the combination. Especially when you know it's lukewarm because of all the condensation. Like we have yeah. some science See? in this video. See? It was great. Yes. I like science. Terrible things going on. Well, there you go. That is commercial sins. Let's move into TV sins. Uh, Star Wars visions. Yes, we promise this is the last one. Uh, <laughs> the Village Bride is the name of this episode. It's episode four. It is many people's favorite episode of the uh, the new Star Wars oh. visions. Well, um, then I do not like the show. Yeah, no. it is. <laughs> It is the most high, uh, highest ranked uh, episode of the episodes. Uh, this weird. was a Hughes Whittington script. Mm-hmm. Ian and Danae writing on this one. Uh, Ian, why don't you kick us off with uh, some of your thoughts on the whole process here? Um, this was, I think, the only one I wrote on for Vision. Okay. I Fair think it could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, uh, I did not enjoy this. High pitched voice, take a drink. Uh, I think it was. He's it's just who he is. We can't it's just, just drink for who you are. Uh, that's can, the whole can point. Can no, that's we? literally the whole game. point yes. of, of drinking I, games. I apologize for every joke. This is this is yeah. what I am. Do you think Jonathan yeah. chooses to reference the outtakes? No, <laughs> it's just part of his being. Um, this is my genetic code. So I visually, I like this one. It was fine. But the story was just like, didn't make any sense to me. I was like, why are we sacrificing why sacrificing this young um woman any better than sacrificing the 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 grandfather? Uh-huh. Like just put a new leader in place. I don't know. Surely you want to keep the young people. I don't know. Didn't make any sense to me. And yeah. it just felt like a David Attenborough documentary. There was so much landscape porn in this. It mm-hmm. was just look at the mountains that we drew, aren't we impressive? Isn't it mm-hmm. beautiful? Um but It I, was the music that did it though. Yeah. The music that was really 
Does David Attenborough sound like James Mason? Did I sound like James Mason then? Deep in the Serengeti. (laughs) That's 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 my David Attenborough. Um, Yeah, it was just really a kind of slow pace. But the last like three minutes is brilliant. Like the lightsabers are sensible; they don't look like umbrellas, Mm -hmm. Um, and that that kind of worked. But the dude with his helmet and what a bizarre gadget to have! Like my entire body is unarmored. The only bit that is is my head, which I'm now going to remove because it is an explosive device, which I'm mm. now going to throw and destroy a discount Millennium Falcon. Sure. That's why, That's why not. It was he great. looked like the, the one of the knights from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And oh, indi- it, well, that was one of the outtakes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Knights just say, nee. It yeah. was an indestructible helmet, too, because it survived the explosion. He put it back on. Mm-hmm. I don't know. didn't make sense. But my he fav- put it back on. Sorry. Was that mocking me or someone else? <laughs> no, no, not you at all. <laughs> uh, my favorite scene was something that Danae wrote. It was just a really simple, um, we are going to bring them down. They will not. The land is on our side. It is not. Yeah. <laughs> it's so back good. to back. So good. I love that. Back to back. That's uh, so good. Um, and did, did you get the that I was being rude with the, with the, the very opening scene? In the emergency what? room. I don't know. We got some weird hand gestures going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> what, what, what <laughs> you the, the, the scanner thing that looks like a lightsaber. I watched but, a very different uh, episode of Star Wars Visions <laughs> than you watched. <laughs> I insinuated it was something else. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. well, I, we've never done that in a video before. No. I'll have to check it out. Check it out. <laughs> you watch Star Wars transmissions. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> this was one of my favorite visions, but I think it was because of the music. It was so there's this beautiful ambient tone, mm-hmm. and it did a good job of setting the mood. And it was really beautiful to see. And I'm definitely more nature person than I am stars you know person in general so there was like a nice little crossover but it was too much nature and i also was very 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 confused as to why this young bride and the groom were so at peace with her like leaving and departing and being stolen away or whatever was going to happen so i was kind of confused like in fact i didn't know i thought she was going to be married to this evil person i didn't realize that she married the other guy like i know they were Mm -hmm. dressed similarly and it was very ceremonial but they could have been that could have been part of their tribe culture so it took two or three watches and a blog reading which is a (laughs) sin because it's like there should be and then maybe maybe it was there maybe there was enough clues that were there there was the ritual but that could have been like a cool like bff ritual like oh we Mm. just unlocked the powers (laughs) of our planet with love yeah they were protected by magina magina but I did think it was a little difficult to write for this one for some reason. It it just seemed like it. I don't know. It, it was a it was a little odd. Not a huge amount happens in it to be no, honest. Yeah, it's, it's a, a very really simple slow. story. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's it's one of my top favorites. But I I don't know. I really liked the first one. The style of that first episode. Mm-hmm. His lightsaber yeah. is red. Even though it's ridiculous, <laughs> it was just yeah. a really beautiful animation. The animation here is beautiful as well. But I think. The difference is the animation style is more simplistic, and they really leaned into the atmosphere of what they were doing, mm. which is which was cool. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed um, just the simple drinking from the bottle sin. I don't even remember who wrote that one, but yeah, I, I like. Oh, that was you. Oh, that's probably yeah. why I like it. So much. <laughs> <laughs> why you like it so much? You are the best. I will leave. I always like it too when the delivery of the sin is really clear from the show. And then we just have to say cliche because we don't get to do that every time. (laughs) Right. And it's when the lead in really works Mm -hmm. that you can just say the word cliche. And this one had that one on the nose. Yeah. So, but yeah. I I I don't think this is my favorite episode. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but but I do like it. I do I do think it is it is beautiful. Uh, I think this whole series has that thing where it's like style over substance in oh, yeah, so many yeah. different ways. Yeah. Um so but yeah, I thought I thought it was fine. Uh I had to mention the high heels uh sin, high heels in battle, high heels when running, high heels on any occasion, love hammer toes. Yeah, uh, Danae shifted that because what did I, I I think I think I put love Danae specifically, yeah, and then she changed it because she doesn't think I love the hammer toes <laughs> thing. It's hilarious. Uh, and then the adding rocks into the water is not how you make a path for fish. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a confusing decision. It's so, yeah. it's so true. It's just like, and then you're what just are you like, saying? And then you're kids. Yeah. What are yeah. you saying? Uh, Jonathan, what about you? Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, it's fine. I, I don't, I haven't really cared much for this series in general, but I mean, I guess this was as good as 
it's Ben. I might prefer the first one too. Yeah, I like the I like that one. I I know my least favorite. Oh yeah, the rock band. That yeah, was terrible. Yeah, that's my least favorite. And Twins was interesting too because they really had this fucking awesome epic battle scene. Mm-hmm. Like the Twins yeah, battle that, scene that was, was really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, made no so, sense, but really it was fun to so watch. So over the top. It's in. It was. It was insane. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But. In a really great, <laughs> in a really great like anime way. Oh it was yeah, totally. So good. Yeah, yeah, over the top. But yeah, I don't. The series altogether is kind of confusing too. As, as far as sins, uh, I like the line in the show is we can't have a bride with dirty feet. And then the sin was maybe may I be so bold as to recommend shoes? And then I assume this was Danae. It felt Danae that don't fucking stand up. Why is he standing up? I thought it was very funny. I think we both had remember. something for that but i was just outraged because i was the the first thing i thought was well why aren't they hitting him i was like why are you standing up yeah <laughs> you were doing great oh yeah, yeah. maybe that wasn't against him now that I, I hear the high voice <laughs> <laughs> yeah the exclamation at the end of my sentence is just means change octave up yes yeah. yes well if i see two exclamation points i know oh, it's definitely it's yeah. two yeah. octaves at that point so, i, I have know. toned it down i have i have gone to like i've even started to pick between question mark an exclamation mark just because i don't think you should have both wow it seems like you're taking this very personally this is would i, this, would I? is that like if me? it's an excited <laughs> if it's an excitable question you kind of have to have both because you have to have the question mark but then sometimes the narrator chooses to ignore one of them <laughs> so in, 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 in the editing phase you you take it all that's right you so tell, well, tell them you uh, pick up that's how you do that all right let's move on to dexter uh we did the pilot because the new series uh has yeah, dropped dexter this, new blood Sorry. yeah dexter new blood i think it's the new series <laughs> uh watkins and whittington writing on this one this was the double w uh script nice so uh yeah ian oh my god why don't you kick us off we what? have a what would and then if we just do it like a D or an A for you, Aaron, do, and you get the D for Danae. Like we have the like the WWJD bracelet almost. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Fair enough. I mean, J sorry. is Jonathan. You know, yeah, but if it, but he's the W for Watkins. Oh, that's true. Well, it was so close. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Mm. Go on. We're here to do a show. Uh, Ian, what, uh, what is your experience with Dexter? What was your experience with this script? Like... Yeah, no, I, I watched, um, I remember watching this when it came out roughly, I watched like the first two seasons, and I remember it lost me when, spoiler, Dexter starts shenanigans with his, um, not biological sister, but... But sister nonetheless. Sister. That was way later in the series, you must have watched a lot of seasons. Oh, I must have done, I must have watched way more than I thought, yeah. I thought that was quite early on. No, because okay. I, did, I didn't get, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, oh, it was weird, yeah, I didn't like that, but I love the first season of this show, it is so so good and it was so original um i always remember like there being a lack of score to it um like you're so much inside dexter's head and how he sees the world and i kind of relate to how he sees the world i haven't whoa, murdered whoa, anybody yet wait. <laughs> it's just very practical just very why are these people being so emotional they should stop being so emotional text my husband real quick like so glad Save ian is staying now. with aaron <laughs> we made the right call okay hide the dogs <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was fun. Uh, I think my favorite thing to sin was, um, I like to imagine that Microsoft had like a product placement deal that just went south, but the Dexter people ran with it anyway and said, great, but all your products are going to be 10 years old. They're going to be out of date. Yeah. Something. Something happened there. Cause all of them were like from the same 18 months of each other. They all law- It was weird. It was like he'd moved into someone else's apartment. Um, I love Jonathan's free the peen. <laughs> the peen. That was yeah. probably an Aaron Denae inspired son. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like we're fine to show all of this blood and gore, but just well, we're gonna just draw the weird. line. Of it penis. was just that was just completely wrapped. Like the rest of his body yeah. is barren, and then that. But of course, now he is he is strapping him down. So I mean, I Barely. guess you could say he's that's just part of where he's strapping him. But I mean, yeah. it's clearly they didn't want to show penis. Yeah, the power of his penis was so strong. Um, and public displays of erection was. I hated myself for not getting that. I was like, well, of course, of course, that's what that is. That's that's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love the show. It was fun. It was really fun. I love doing older shows. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's a good bit of nostalgia. Jonathan? Um, I watched the show for a little bit. I It's hard to do a show like this, right? Because if your protagonist is a serial killer or your main character is a serial killer, I mean, he is basically the protagonist. I mean, that's a tough line to, to fiddle with. I think the show did a pretty good job for a few seasons. I know I watched the first four seasons because the fourth season was John Lithgow. And that's mm. probably my favorite season yeah. of the show. That, as it should be. Yeah. I mean, John Lithgow is just insanely good as the Trinity killer. And then I think I, and I think I 
tail I think it was like the next season I watched like the first few episodes and then I was just done I don't remember why I was done but I was just done I just didn't want to watch it anymore maybe we quit getting showtime I don't know something happened and uh, I've never gone back and and picked up because I've always heard such it's terrible that last season is so well, bad. I've heard the last couple seasons yeah it just gets oh, so bad yeah, I think I, I am going to check out the new one I haven't yet but I am I do have the intention of at least seeing what's going on yeah um, cause I did really like those first few seasons. Um, and I had read a couple of the books that they're based on the Jeff Lindsay novels. And, uh, so I was, I was into it for a minute, but yeah, it just got to be where I was just like, eh, you know, I'm just, I'm not into this anymore. I liked the, uh, just the dexteration. And then after that, it was like <laughs> every damn pilot. So I, I was just getting to the point where I've, I've written plenty of scripts now and i'm just like wow we really are sending the same stuff like every, every mm -hmm. tv show pretty much does this same stuff just narration is such an easy crutch to fall oh yeah, yeah 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 they absolutely do and then i also i liked um i liked also pulling from aaron and danae's heads probably <laughs> was the uh calling deborah the real monster of the series because she only <laughs> ate part of a donut i felt personally <laughs> attacked on that one throws it back in the box i literally yeah. wrote that one down like I feel personally attacked right now. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's and it's me. the needless F as well, isn't it? It's like, that's a nice fucking donut that yeah. I'm not going to eat. Uh, based <laughs> on the shaving sin, I think, Ian, you just need to go to a barber from now on and just let them do it. If that's oh, what your yeah. face looks like. If that was <laughs> this is true. I don't shave. <laughs> and I love that Ian has introduced me to the term chuckle fucks. I think that's the <laughs> yeah. He's where I think learning, I've used that. Something. And mm -hmm. I just realized I did not write notes for music videos so, because I see that's blank. Oh, great. So we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Oh, we'll you have this. time. Make you have time up. right now. <laughs> Pull a Danae and while we talk, just quickly go in there. Or we'll just talk about last week's video. Like, yeah, that's what go. I do when I haven't prepared. That's why this show is amazing, guys. Because everybody get... just does what works for them. Yeah. I hope I gave you an works. editing point there. Sorry. I just, <laughs> no, I just good, noticed good. that and I just kind of said good. my thoughts. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, I also really enjoyed Dexter. I think it came to it late. Um, it's I think it, I think a lot of it has to do with the performances, right? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, oh, especially yeah. that central performance is it's just really fascinating and interesting. And I don't think it makes much sense on a human psycho you know psychological level that he's both a sociopath and also somehow able to delineate um, you know good from bad and those kind of like. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, the one of the well, key things about a sociopath is that morality is isn't often something that's. But it is interesting. I don't know. I mean, I guess we can spoil a series that's been off this long, right? Because I I doesn't I remember though in the second season I think it's second season where he kills Dokes, mm -hmm. who's yeah. not a bad guy. I right. mean, he's not. He's a kind of a dick. Yeah. But right. I, I just remember that being where oh the show see and I think that's kind of what I liked about the show early on was that it was willing to kind of toy with that like he would right. save his own ass too like he would he would you know if he had to but right. anyways but it just needed him to be a quote unquote good yeah. character yeah. too mm -hmm. too much um but uh but yeah it was terrible at the end and I was really disappointed um I liked the any sentence you can use to defend why you had to uh have just one more delicious cream filled twinkie cannot also be used to defend murdering children um such a great point mm. uh not simply calling this company Miami Ice thank you uh so very good so very very good Danae, what about for you? you I was told to watch Dexter late as well everything had already wrapped there was no more dexters being made i want to say it's been the last five years that i watched my first episode of dexter and it was literally just you know this is one of those ones you're you're supposed to watch because it was groundbreaking for various reasons and i think i was curious about it because everyone said it got so bad and i'm like well what does that mean mm -hmm. what does this train wreck actually feel like and i think i started watching it with the intention of just binging all eight mm -hmm. but i don't remember if i did or i just watched the first season maybe season maybe two seasons or something like i binged them and then jumped to the end to see what it was mm. which was so not interesting that i don't remember how i felt about it <laughs> <laughs> so That's, i don't remember sounds like everyone that watched that I, don't remember yeah. fine. I don't remember what happened i don't remember plot points you took like the the sin that kind of references him having feelings or something towards his sister character i don't remember that at all which means i was an autopilot binging which means that this doesn't really have mm. any i don't remember what this has except for that interesting perspective of what happens if a really bad person does really bad things to really bad people. Mm. That kind of approach to creating content, like 
we don't want to root for someone killing people, but if we do, this is sort of how we could do it. Right. Sort of a vibe. It's a, a serial killer so. killing other serial killers. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting concept. It and, is an interesting yeah. concept. And I think that's why you watch and you realize that they've cleverly folded in uh, like just a new way to do a CSI kind of style show right. where every week you feature another serial killer or another killer, another something, a murder that's happened. And in some procedurals you are rooting for the police or you're rooting for the justice system and in this case you're rooting for murder so it's just like it's just an interesting kind of one um but i did like the sin though that pointed out uh that dexter is going to like inform that he's incapable of feeling emotion but here in this pilot episode he was very emotional mm -hmm. like with, oh, yeah. so that was an interesting thing that if i was to watch it Again, I would be looking for those interesting points to go. Is he acting? You know, I like, still is don't he... get that. Yeah, because that was, that was Ian and I read that and I was like, oh, that's a very good point. Like, that did not come him? to me. Yeah, who's he trying to convince here? It's just yeah. him and the the murderer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that it didn't yeah. fit. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Another one that I really enjoyed this, we've done this in before and it continues to be one of my favorites, is when the narrator just has a slur of words that are bleeped. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, something different was done where the entire word wasn't bleeped. It kind of cut in in these sort of jarring ways where you're hearing the tiniest bits of, and it was a really delightful teaser where your brain is trying to immediately, whether you want it to or not, piece together what the actual word was. And it was such a clever way of just changing it a little bit. Because usually like, yeah. the, we don't want to beep, and there was a beep, 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 but this was a like, beep, 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 beep. it kind of yeah. cut in more Morse code, like it was really neat. So, yeah. well done. Well, well, I have that in my keeping tab, so. Uh, okay, nice. Perfect. So, yes, we will talk more about that for sure. Um, I think that's all of us. I think we can move on to music video sins. Some of us can. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I've watched the video. I, mean, I, I worked on the edit. So, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, Jamie the edit. Fox, blame it on the a a a alcohol. Um, this is uh, this is an old song, right? Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I watched this and I was like, I don't. I didn't think Jamie Foxx was making new music right now. No. But, um, but yeah. Anyhow. No, this is the uh, I always be known to me as the video where Ron Howard is a clubber. Like I just <laughs> yeah. Like I I, 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 I still remember hat. seeing this video like for the first time and seeing everybody get out of the car and then it's Ron Howard. One of the yeah. like... things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, today you want to kick us off? Yeah, whatever, whatever. Blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah. That's how I felt. <laughs> um, I think it's fair. I think it's a very mm -hmm. solid review. I I enjoyed it, but. My my favorite kind of moment is the masked singer sin at the end because just like the the hot as hell kind of just pulling all that mm -hmm. together. But there were several moments that I like really enjoyed this script and was having you know my normal experience with MVS. But the song I just I, songs like this I just it's hard to engage with them right. I understand. Yeah, I just yeah. sort of like yeah hit, yeah I totally the, I'm totally with you. I hit the autopilot button <clears throat> so. The mass singer thing was hilarious, though. I will talk about that because Barrett didn't know this. And so because I even told him, I was like, dude, that mass singer thing was hilarious. And I was like, and it's even funnier. And you probably don't even know why, because they have guessed Jamie Foxx like so many times on that show. There was yeah, even at one point amazing. they had like yeah. basically the equivalent of a swear jar. So anytime, anytime they would someone guess, guessed Jamie Foxx, they would they would have to throw something in there. Jamie Foxx has even been a guest judge on there. So, I mean, oh, it was that's just funny. It that's really. So, I mean, I don't know how many people watching that also watch Mass Singer, but I just told I was like, that's you ended great. up actually having a, a really interesting connection there. You didn't even realize. Yeah. So accidental genius. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go next? Well, I, like I said, I forgot to write sends. I forgot to write the sends down. But I will say, I I really enjoyed the video. I mean, I watched it a couple times because I had to review the edit, and um, I just the stuff making making jokes about Ron Howard, uh, and uh, and like little Jake Gyllenhaal driving the car, who I'd forgotten he was part of it. Uh, I mean, I guess he's not little, but he's younger. He's big in the news right now because of Taylor Swift. Yeah, like, that's true. That's, that's like true. all over my news feed. Uh, that's that's why Barry that did this, right? What's that? Is that a thing? She just released like a ten minute song about their relationship. Where oh, she just, yeah. I mean, it's no, it's not like explicitly, but there's, it's very clear that that's the relationship she's talking about. So, oh, dear. yeah. yeah. And uh, just I, I'm like you guys. I, I don't. I mean, the song is just kind of a, a, a non-starter for me. It just there's nothing about it that interests me. And I mean, I don't, I don't know that I hate it or anything. Like if it was on, I would be like, okay, this is on in the background. Mm -hmm. But 
Like, I, I definitely wouldn't go to it. <laughs> My wife actually really liked, I think she had an album of his, or she just had a bunch of songs downloaded, because I know she had, but I don't think this is one of the ones she liked. But uh, he does have some music that's better than this, I will say. And he's a good singer. Uh, he's a very talented guy. But, yeah. um, you know, I mean, you knew that from, like, the In Living Color days. But, um, in but, Living Color. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's not, a, it's not a good song. It's a video that needed to be done. I'm glad Barrett finally did it, so... Yeah. It was He's right for to the a few picking. of those, like this, and like we had Hello Kitty here last month or so, and it's I like I like when he goes back and does some of these uh, that you know from ten fifteen years ago. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember this song. Not yeah. even. Yeah, just I thought this could have come out last week. And I I think the video references that it's old, but yeah, mm-hmm. I had no idea. It's maybe just maybe he never hit it over in uh, in the UK. Maybe Jamie Fox didn't selling albums over there. I was gonna say I don't know if he hit it over here. I know he did actor wise, <laughs> but yeah, um, didn't quite make it. And it's just a naff song. It's just yay booze. Um, which yay booze, but. Uh, don't need a big old song about it but this is like such a wasted cast like forrest whitaker jake journal uh, ron howard jamie fox like there's so many people in it it's like mm-hmm. was this just an excuse for you guys to have fun just yes. get together yes. and roll some cameras and of course yeah of course exactly how, what, like, what was that call to ron howard and then ron howard's like yeah that's totally me let's do this yeah let's do it i will absolutely maybe that is in. totally ron howard i mean i don't yeah. know good good for mm-hmm. him i mean i have no idea what that dude does but it just it didn't fit like in my yeah. mind no, yeah not at all it's like opie getting out of the car yeah, it's, not, it's <laughs> definitely not who ron howard is in my head <laughs> yeah. and like, they yeah. didn't lean into it either it like, was just it was as if anybody else had turned up it was like oh yeah, yeah it's ron howard Ron effing Howard. Yep. Uh, the Dave Matthews band reference was hilarious. That made me laugh. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> it was so, so good. Uh, but my favorite one was because it's kind of, it was one of these scenes where I knew it was going somewhere and I knew it was going to be funny, but I couldn't work out where. And it was how he's describing that this video reminds you of what it's like to be drunk. Um, and then the narrator just starts heaving, just starts yeah. vomiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, well, this is what hype was going for. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That was perfect. Uh, the only one that wasn't mentioned that I wanted to mention was the uh, All This According to T-Pain. Uh, <laughs> all of this self-like proclamation yeah, yeah, of how great yeah, yeah. All this amazing is. stuff, yeah. <laughs> all of this according to, let me check my notes, oh, T-Pain uh, mentioned all this stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything to add about the song either. Uh, let's move into Cinema Sins. How have we not done Ghostbusters? I, I like, thought we had. Makes me feel it's amazing. Yeah. That's great. I love it that that like after how you know nine years or whatever it's been since the the channel started. I meant to, I, yeah, I was actually thinking about asking Chris because I was thinking like you know we we didn't do this in 2016. You know when when go. I mean it's just interesting. You know, but I'm yeah. sure there was something else that week sure. that just made more yeah, sense. Sure. But yeah, but it's fun, right? It's fun yeah. to like throw it out there and everybody's like, oh wait, we haven't done this yet. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Someone on Instagram had the opposite reply. It was you're a bit late, aren't you? I was like, well, <laughs> yes, thirty five years late. In fact, and, but there is a Ghostbusters movie opening this week, yeah, so you know, kind of yeah. why we did it. Yeah, uh, this was an Atkinson share script. Um, so, so yeah, Ghostbusters. Uh, I don't think you can be my age and not have like that in oh, you yeah. somewhere. Like mm-hmm. if, for someone my age, it was just all everybody talked about at school in the mid eighties. Halloween you know? costumes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those movies. Now the thing is, my parents thought it was a little too risque, so I didn't really. Oh, it is. I didn't really. Uh, yeah, I. I should. I should say, backing up my parents here. Yeah. Hey, there's mean, a it, lot of crazy. Bill Murray is it wrong. pushes. <clears throat> it pushes PG as far as you. It would not be PG today. No. Yeah. And it pushes yeah. that as far as it can. Yeah. I you am know. right. It is PG, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it would be PG-13 today for sure. Yeah, well, and um, that was the year that they decided to do PG-13 because that was the same year as Temple of Doom and yeah. Gremlins. So I'm pretty sure it was. Anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I just, you know, so it wasn't like Star Wars in my life where I could watch it on VHS every night. It was like it wasn't mm-hmm. something I watched a lot, but it's still just inside you, just from culture, you know, just all those quotes. And this, this video does a great job at really pointing out those those moments in this movie that oh, stood yeah. the test of time and taken off several worthwhile sins, mm-hmm. you know, for like back to back as well. That was yeah. that was really cool. The yeah. string of those. Um, the investigating the growling coming from your refrigerator. Uh, <laughs> laughed at that one. Uh, this Ray dreams about this beautiful lady ghost who comes to him in the night to give him a BJ in a phantasmic orgasm. But why does she disappear? Uh, anyways, I'm sure when Ray wakes up, he'll realize he had a 
white dream. Uh, nice. So, nice. so very good. So very good. Uh, and then I had to mention the shout out to uh, Bible quiz tournaments. Training for a great. Bible quiz tournament uh, while on the clock. Amazing. 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 Quizzers unite. Uh, all right. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go second? What do you got? Um, so, yeah, this movie was a huge part of my childhood as far as movies go. Um, I don't even know how many times I've seen this movie. It's one of those I don't have to. It doesn't have to be on. Like, like I don't have to be looking at it. I can hear the dialogue, know exactly what's on the screen. You know, it's one of those yeah. movies. Uh, it's one of my all-time favorite comedies. It's just such a brilliantly written film, which I don't even know if that gets talked about enough. And Bill Murray, that might be like like the all-time comedic performance. It's one of them. Like it, like it's got to be in that conversation of mm-hmm. like what's yeah. the best performance in a comedy and proof that the Oscars doesn't give a shit about comedies. Because yeah. I mean, Bill Murray should have been nominated for this easily, even whatever supporting best actor or whatever. Sure. Probably should have won. Because uh, it's just it's it's I, I don't even know. It's just it's I it's hard to explain, but it's just every line he gives. It's like 110 percent and he's just he's in that character and it's just and it could be it's just him i mean and i think how we've seen him outside of this he kind of is him in some ways so maybe that's maybe that's why people don't give it as much credit like some of it as feels ad libbed like and the flowers yeah. are still i will standing. say I, I have a copy of the script and from what i remember a lot of that is in the script mm. but i don't know how much he helped with that you know and 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 that kind of thing but it's it's pretty interesting it's also it was a it's an interesting movie too because the special effects in it i know a lot of people talk about the special effects in it today special effects were not good in 84 either but this was a movie that was really rushed like they uh as soon as they got it going they gave them a date and so and i think it was like less than a year it's like they had to make this in like 10 months or something Mm -hmm. so that has a lot to do with that so i i find that pretty easy to forgive and i still think it's fun like i think they're the way they interact with everything i think is a lot of fun but it's just it's so funny the effects yeah. like, are so it's just unique so funny that i think that's why they still hold up yeah because they're nothing so looks unique like to ghostbusters any any movie that was on that level of production probably had something better mm. and you know and it, it but it was a little too high for like lower end stuff so but yeah it's kind of its own beam, it's kind of its own middle ground that still holds up the proton yeah. beam effect i think is, so that's yeah where the but like there's there's some it. obvious like obvious like map paintings and stuff like that the demon dogs look ridiculous like when yeah, they're, the every time they move things yeah i mean there's stuff like that but uh and i've heard commentary on this and reitman talks about like if he could go back and you know redo something it would definitely be that you know mm. stuff like that but uh and i love i just love the joy coming out of everybody involved with the script mm-hmm. like i mean this is one of those where like if you don't think we're funny fine i don't care but like if you want to say we don't like movies, like go watch this video. Because I mean, mm-hmm. even in the even in the sins where we're you know we're we're giving an actual sin, it's still like there's just so much love there you can yep. feel. There's that one I think it's like when maybe when Winston says says the if you're if you get asked if you're a god line and it's just Jeremy's just kind of like <laughs> mm-hmm. and then it just the sins you know yeah. go off. Uh, I just I loved all that. Um, I like that they send we don't know what happened to the librarian between. Her getting scared and lying down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's always bugged me. I've always been like, what, 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 what was the in between here? Uh, jaywalking. I thought we were supposed to like Dana, but she is clearly a serial criminal. Uh, remember how hilarious casual sex harassment was back oh, in the man. 80s? I had that one written down. Yeah. Um, and then I just loved the, um, oh, it was, I think the send off on that one was, God, this movie is so fucking great. I think that's what it was. Mm. Um, I just like when the narrator is just like, there has to be a better way to possess humans than what we just saw. Like, it's so matter of fact. <laughs> right. It has to be more there, not been a committee? <laughs> like, this is, we haven't made this it to 1984. Yeah. But this, this is, is how we do it. probably one of my favorite videos. I, it was so much fun. I, and I love, that's what I'm saying. I, lo- I like I like when we do the movies that I love. It's, yeah. it's mm. a lot more fun for me. I think me. you can tell when someone writes on the script who has that passion for yeah. the content because there were several of them where you can just i don't know maybe it's just because i've been doing this for a little while but i can tell when someone has a really good understanding of the content that's being mm-hmm. sinned and you're just pulling from this like i have had this question for so <laughs> I have long been waiting. This and is my here time. is my moment to mm-hmm. finally ask what happened to the fucking librarian <laughs> 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 which i thought was really great so as i was watching this video it was this like nostalgia bombs that were coming in because mm-hmm. I know I've seen this movie mm-hmm. sure. at least in parts, but I yeah. don't remember sitting down and watching it. No one's surprised by that. And then this really fun uh, script that I really, really enjoyed. But this for me, so my Ghostbusters experience was merchandise. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. sure. it was like, it was just this 
everything was Ghostbusters for a long time. It felt like all the toys and then slime became a thing, which is why one of my favorite sins was the uh, when when he got slimed mm-hmm. and the sin is like that it inspired Nickelodeon for content for the next four years. It's like everything was slime after that. There was... And, and oh, it still it still is a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kids yeah. make it all the time, like at our house and stuff. Oh, it's awful. And they do this <laughs> thing in the in the movie too, which I think if having not seen having not seen it as an adult, or and if I did see it when I was I was too young to understand the context of the sins that were occurring that are inappropriate or you know not PG thirteen right. or whatever. Like this, they do this they do this with everything, but they made Slimer so cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you watch the movie, and he is, but there's like also just some scary shit going on. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you know when they draw you into a movie, and then you're like, whoa, that was way more than I bargained for. It was, it would be like if they made Beetlejuice, like really cute and adorable, and you go and you watch Beetlejuice, and they're just peeling their faces off, and it's just <laughs> yeah, this claymation insanity. The Beetlejuice insanity. cartoon is way softer, and then you watch yeah. the movie, and you're like, like this oh, holy the, shit! This, I, that's a good send to the Slimer thing. I love because I love that Chris and Barrett are acknowledging that he wasn't even called Slimer like no, in the movie. Was, that was, was that was because he became popular after that. It just became yeah. a popular toy was and he... stuff. So they put him in the cartoon. Yeah, I don't think oh. he was named in the film at all. Mm. Really? No, that's surprising. Even, I guess that makes sense. I think but... like the last season or two of the Real Ghostbusters, or maybe it was even a spinoff oh, cartoon, was called Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters or something like that. Mm. Or so. that's so interesting. I guess you just have this weird, and I don't. <laughs> I don't mind the really bad like effects. Yeah. Mostly because I just love to see how effects have changed over the years. And then and you're, you watch one and some the cloud structure reminded me of um uh never ending story. Yes. Like the nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Or Trippy. or uh, Flash Gordon. It was very that. So it's just neat to see that. I also, I think, I also, I I think another thing, I'm sorry, I don't mean to go up, but another thing about this movie I love so much is just how they use New York so well. And Dan Aykroyd actually saw him the other night on a talk show. He was talking about this, that they actually didn't have a lot of permits and stuff. They just started shooting in a lot of areas. <laughs> and so like that scene where they're talking about the real estate, which that scene is in, that they're talking about taking out the mortgage. All those people around them, yeah. those are just New Yorkers that are walking around. That's they're just amazing. in the middle and they weren't even paying attention to them because it's New York. They don't yeah. care. You know, they, oh, yeah. there's somebody with a camera shooting some people talking about mortgages, whatever. <laughs> so those are actual Wednesday. just citizens just in there, you know, yeah. hey, I'm in a movie now. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters is my happy place. That's yeah. Uh, recently, re- little, recently rewatched them for another show, um, and it was great. I wish that Bill Murray was just like maybe just ninety nine point five percent less <laughs> aggressively sexist <laughs> and creepy. Like the opening oh, scene yeah, no, when he's doing the, like he's yeah. shocking yeah. your man, and then just not showing the cards. And it is exclusively to um, to seduce this young mm-hmm. lady. Um, it is that's an interesting way to open your film and to make that because he's meant to be the hero. Like this is the endearing quality you yeah. want to stand out. Like, for no, this character. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, I mean it definitely a is a group, but yeah, no, I mean he's definitely the one that gets the most time. Like, yeah, yeah, and they get together, and it's like oh, him and Sigourney really? Weaver. Yeah, yeah, it was like really that that didn't. They have a learn. kid. Yeah. Ah! Well, no, no. Oh, that's not his kid. No, no, no. Too? It's the so it's the orchestra guy that she goes off that's with right. it's his so they get married and divorced off screen I haven't seen Ghostbusters 2 in a long time yeah, I'm not, I'm not just, a fan of that movie it so. just hits a big old reset button <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah and I'll fight people that say it's better it's not it's fine but it's not better um, but yeah this film's great I still got an Ecto-1 at home with um, <laughs> the doors on it and the trap ejects from the trunk of the car and it flies out and then it would eject well slime or something and the little siren on the butt on the on the top goes like, meow, meow. it's so good i love that sound so much this is when i wish we had a visual podcast because <laughs> yeah i did all, all the actions there the joy that ian had on his face as describing a, a toy car uh, set up it's my so i will i will watch every single trailer for however many ghostbusters films they want to make because you will always get the glory shot of ecto one yeah spinning round a corner oh it's so good it's so good <laughs> um yeah happy place uh the scenes i really liked was i just have a thing for arrows um reading and the entire screen is just like yeah you're in a library so <laughs> yeah. how many arrows do we want on this right. all of them please every spare arrow that you have um harkening back to the guy with the cat covering himself oh man it was so good 
It's just there's it was nothing so good. It, nothing. I was so happy. Yep. Just me and Janae losing it. Um, and I, man, this was dark. This is one of those where I'd have been like, I don't know if I would have included this. Uh, was, I see the Ghostbusters and the NYPD have something in common. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that yeah. was good. That, that was, was good. That was dark. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, great we, video. Love the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one of those where you just like. Okay, the the joke has to be good, mm-hmm. and you know because the accuracy of the you know the target. Mm-hmm. What was the line um, again? Well, um, it was just that they oh. just turned and shot without. Oh, know, that's right. It that's was right. a lady with a car. Yeah, um, that's right. And then they turn yeah. and shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. immediately. Yeah. The one in the hotel. The that's lady. It. Who the hell are you shooting at? Or whatever oh, she yeah, said. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. I was like, I wonder where they're gonna go with. Oh, okay, cool, <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, that was Ghostbusters. On to In the Heights. Uh, this was a Cardoso Dicer script. Daniel and I writing on this one. Uh, this is Lin Manuel's. I think it was his first real hit on Broadway. Right, In the Heights I think was so, yes. on Broadway. Did really well. That's kind of how he got discovered. That's, you know, he spun that into Hamilton, which is where obviously he just completely skyrocketed. Yeah, to so good. The stratosphere. Um, so, so yeah. So we're taking a look at In the Heights. There's also a Lin Manuel Miranda movie coming out. Uh, there his is. First, uh, directing, his directorial debut is uh, coming out here this week as well. Um, I, there were a couple things in watching. I, I should say this. I loved this movie. Uh, still love this movie. But I loved it so much the first time I watched it, I immediately watched it again, um, which is That's really fun. You. That's a fun thing when stuff's coming out Dan did and streaming mm. is like, oh, yeah, I can just push play again and watch this nice. amazing experience I had. Uh, I'm a sucker for musicals. People know this. I love a you know a good musical. Yeah, but still, that's a really good sign if you want to immediately consume. Because yeah, I don't know again. that I've ever done that. Maybe when I, I know. Was I'm a trying kid. to think. I oh. very rarely do. Yeah. Like, I do it with music. You, you don't rewatch yeah. anything. That, that's <laughs> a small thing. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I, I very rarely re- rewatch yeah. stuff. It's almost like so. If like if it's music, you're trying to like pick out lyrics, or yeah. you want to hear the hook again, or you well, want to hear the build up again. That's what it is with a musical and too. It's like oh, I want to yeah. see because these scenes are so vast and epic and there's dancers all over like it's you know i just want to take it all in again and see new stuff and Mm. and that kind of uh thing plus the movie is does have a story turn that makes you know watching it again kind of rewarding in that way that movies that have a story turn can be you know Mm. you kind of notice other things and uh and different things um so i do really really love this movie i will say in sending it uh there are a couple things that stand out uh stood out to me one is the key relationship in this movie is so unearned like it is it is just a a person pining for another person they have half of a lousy date and all of a sudden (laughs) we're supposed to be like totally invested in them as a couple and it's just like your your first date you basically just like trolled each other yeah and it's you know it's so strange for me watching anything where they just have the two leads on screen and we as an audience instinctively like those are the people that we're rooting for Mm -hmm. and you just forget Mm -hmm. to ask questions like but why Why? what is Mm -hmm. the connection right yes between you and there are some movies where they work on the tension the whole time or they work on their issues the whole time and you can kind of see the resolution of con like a conflict resolution situation you can kind of like buy into the more long-term relationship idea but those seem to be themes that are really fresh and new and now what was the movie that came there's a movie that came out it was all about like the divorce process and just working through yeah, and realizing, marriage story, marriage story yeah, yeah and just like mm-hmm. that tension of this isn't going somewhere like we are in a bad pattern this is mm-hmm. going in a different direction and then you have other movies that just will sit inside relationships for a little bit longer but it's just so strange how instantly we see two people on the screen wherever it is and it's like that's what i want i want right. those two together <laughs> right with no I know context nothing about them but they should be together forever yeah, yeah. just like in ghostbusters with sukuni yeah. weaver's character and like but, but why what is is it that they're just good chemistry because they're great actors that's potentially nope. part of it but then if the story <laughs> itself is just like we have two pretty people to look at so pretty people are going to go together yeah it's just weird. well and we've been taught we've been taught to especially honor the idea of oh i see that person I'm going to make them mine. You know, that whole like, you know, yeah. kind of like pursuit thing that happens. And so as an audience, you, you know, you know, if they are smitten that you want them to win, you know, mm-hmm. you want them to get the girl or the guy or whatever. Mm. Um, so I did notice that a little bit more. Also, the the lottery ticket thing is absolutely ridiculous. Like just the when you really start to think mm-hmm. about that decision that she made to hide that lottery, just right on Fort Usnavi on it and just hide it. Like, what are you, 
why? It's a gamble. Why are you waiting? Why are you like? What is the motivation? Why did you think that would work? Um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that was noticeable as well. Um, the dominoes. It was fun to find a freeze frame like <laughs> huge mistake <laughs> like that. Uh, I did notice second time watching it through. It's not just the um, the one on the spinner. It's the next one in oh, that line loose. too. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I was just like somebody didn't really care about mm -hmm. the dominoes. Uh, and then this is very much an Aaron thing and I apologize, but just going off on ignore anyone who doubts you, uh, is just one of those things where it's like, yeah. it's that thing we do where it's like, Hey, maybe you want to think about that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of sometimes, sometimes it's okay that people doubt you and you should maybe pay attention and yeah. just be like, no, that's not something. I'm we all know what the movie means. We all understand, you know, but at the same time, it's. But. If we're going to be uh, didactic about it, that is something to take into account. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Danae, what about you? I've never seen this. Uh, this is one of those where I wanted to sit down and, and ask more questions and have a conversation about like what is it? Because musicals are difficult. Well, I'm here. I'm here to answer. <laughs> musicals are difficult for multiple reasons. Now that we don't play the music, the context oh. of the movie mm -hmm. is the sin itself. Well, there was one. My, so. The one, and I, th I think it actually works all right, but the one I was most sad about was where she literally in the, in the song goes, no, 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 no. Like, it's like all these, and then the sin is just, no. No. But instead, I had to say, you know, she says no 28 times, and my response to that is, right. You know, so you have to kind of figure out different ways to mm. Yeah, you have it. to, you have to describe what you're experiencing, whether it's lyrically or sometimes even visually, depending on the lead in, because music is just such a hot spot. We don't want to play music that will not allow us to show you guys yeah. our fun content we still want to entertain you without it we, we want to show you what we're working on and so the risk of playing music is just too high but mm -hmm. when you're sending a musical and you're watching a sins video and you're trying to piece together what the musical is about based on the sins sure. based on the music that you can't play i just was it was one of those where you're i'm watching it and i'm so like what do you think okay. happened see that's the fun that's I the fun no game idea. for me is what does danae think this movie is about Listen, I checked out. I started doodling. <laughs> that can confirm. Yeah. I was like, okay. So it sucks in a way. But I love musicals. But I still haven't seen La La Land. And I feel like this can't usurp La La Land in my queue. Yeah, you should check La La Land out sometime. It's, it, if I have a queue, mm -hmm. then it's La La Land comes first. I like okay. that the queue nice. itself is in question. Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah. I'm not committing yeah. to a queue of movies that yeah. I'm going to watch. Um, I did like the, the rant about 530 in the morning. Yes. Um, I have a little bit about that. In, that's uh, amazing. I really in enjoyed the uh, sin where there's uh, calling into question the yoga poses mixed with leg waxing. Uh -huh. Because I just felt like that would be something that I would spot in the background. And immediately I was like, what is happening back there? And I didn't even realize that there was legs wa leg waxing happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's a very great question. Um, paired really quickly with this scene does contain a lap dance which is a fun way to bring back an oldie but a goldie. Mm -hmm. um, there was a gossip scene I really enjoyed, and there was a delivery of the word "geez" I just really loved, and I. Uh, it's one of my favorite sins. Just I, how emphatic he was about I it. I wrote in the note for the, in the notes for the narrator. I wrote the narrator is unreasonably angry about this. <laughs> like it is clear that this isn't yeah. a big deal. So this is the sin where she's hiding his eyes and taking him in, and she just seemed she seemed to me to be so like angry at him for like peeking even though he wasn't peeking and, and so, just yeah. like geez yeah. it's just like this like the way that he delivers that one was delightful yeah. so um oh and you know, there, how you how we end a script is something we think about like actually I, I cut some sins at the end of a script recently just because i really wanted to end it on a like a punch mm -hmm. even though there was good content and that's always difficult but i thought um ending this one with a hamilton sin was really delightful choice mm -hmm. so yeah uh yeah oh i don't know what's going on in this movie i really don't. so I, I haven't seen it it's on my list um quite high up on the list to watch but do you like musicals i do not okay. but that has been changing recently um what did i watch that i enjoy hamilton really enjoyed it like i passionately don't like musicals but hamilton turned me around recently dear evan evan house Housh evan hansen hansen man that hit me oh. i know that's it's come under fire for like some stuff but yeah. yeah for some reason that that caught me on a day and i really enjoyed it but i think i'll enjoy this i think i think so man i listen i don't i don't know what to tell people who don't enjoy 
musicals usually like it, it's not my job to you know figure mm. out how to make people enjoy musicals but for me there's just something music can do if you give yourself to like the suspension of disbelief of it mm -hmm. where it's like the emotion just elevates in song sometimes it's i think just... my problem is that there's so there seems to be so many filler songs and it seems to be sure. is this actually progressing the story or was this just a chance to be lyrically acrobatic acrobatical right. yeah. um i love it when the the music actually moves along the story then i can right. i can get on board with it a bit more yeah. but yeah no i couldn't follow the video um love the sins but I, I i assume this is something about two people being in love that win the lottery and then there's somebody talking to kids on a boat but they're sure. not on a boat <laughs> Well, That's I good. mean, really, there's nothing much else to it. Cool. Uh, good job, Ian. You got the whole thing. Well done, nice. Ian. Uh, you don't Save myself. To check it out. Two and a half hours. Done. Excellent. Um, but some of these sins, I, I there is something about when you and Daniel are on a script yeah. that it becomes biblical. Like, <laughs> the length of some of these sins are fantastic. I feel like the and, intellectual, they just start to get uh, really intellectual about it. Like, without offending anybody in the room, I think it's the two most intelligent people, like, just <laughs> writing a script together it's so good it's so so good i mean most of that is daniel honestly like he he his mind is really his mind yeah. works in some it's some really interesting ways yeah so, but did he do the alarm clock or was that you because the that, alarm clock was me yeah the like alarm that clock was when me. off i love it i'm still i'm not quite brave enough to just go off randomly i did it with no that video hasn't come out yet but the just going off really randomly like we're not really sinning anything in the movie here but we're going to yeah. make the sin five minutes long so that yeah. that allows you to do whatever you want with it yeah the, fun, so the fun turn the fun i had with that one was the turn at the end where you know we, we're pretending to have a back and forth conversation with the audience yes. right where so the narrator good. is like well then you'll say and then i'll mm -hmm. say and then <laughs> and they're all kind of fun valid little bit valid yeah. things that kind of apply to the sin and at the end of there is like and then i'll be like why are we even talking about this <laughs> when the sin is leaving your blinds open at night you know so. you end up sinning yourself i love it um, the gradually building music that cuts the narrator off. The narrator's like, quick, 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 my mom, <laughs> yeah. quick. Yeah, that was Daniel. That was nicely yeah. done. I like messing around with stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I have to mention domestic violence because I know how much that meant to Mr. Dicer. Oh, yes, yes. I yes. love it. Domestic violence. It was just right there. It's the great. universe had presented it. Mm -hmm. It was right there. For I love me. it. Uh, Jonathan, what about you? Um, I love musicals. I liked this movie. I don't think I loved it. Um, I uh, the I think the Usnavi is it Jessica is that her name in the movie? I, I think that relationship bothered uh, took it down more for me than it did yeah. you. Yeah. I, especially that you talk about that date. I remember when we reviewed this on a mini pod. I was talking about that the confrontation that gets created between them is such BS. Like it, yeah, it's the it's silliest total, yeah, thing. It's the stupidest, and it's most like, contrived. Yeah, it's like one of those things where it's just like you know, not every romantic comedy or whatever has to have this moment where the two people don't get along for a second. Right. Like it, they, that just always feels so contrived to me, unless it just is supernatural. And it definitely didn't feel natural here because it was just like he let her dance with somebody. And then, like, they couldn't hear each other. And it just, none of it made any sense. Right. Like, it just, it didn't feel like something that would blow up the way it and did. The, and then the blackout happens. Yeah. And then they have this moment in the movie where they're supposed to reconcile. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, what are we reconciling? <laughs> you have had nothing. There's, like, you are not a couple. You no. literally had no. half a date where you like hated each other like yeah it's it's yeah it's it's kind of it that so that kind of took me out of it um but i but i did like it and i really like we didn't even talk about like i love Corey hawkins in this movie yeah. like he's so good and his 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 relationship with the woman playing jimmy smith's daughter is really fun that's actually a more interesting relationship uh but anyways uh it's 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 fine like i like it um it's definitely worth a watch if you have any interest um, did somebody mention scratching your manhole cover? <laughs> no. Oh, no, but I did when I watched it. I love yes. that pause. There's where you need the ellipses. Yes. That, was, yeah. that was perfect. Exactly. <sighs> so good. Uh, pricing your cousin the same as the canned beans. <laughs> um, I haven't seen someone dispense with cream as quickly since Eric Clapton. <laughs> And then uh, I did have this scene can, does, does contain a lab dance. I thought that was hilarious. But choosing the stairway to heaven instead of the ramp, I thought yes. was a good turn yeah. of phrase. So. Yeah. Mm, so good. Well, the lead in on that one where you're just watching it and you're like, okay, what's going to happen? Oh. Yeah, that, that's the one. <laughs> I seriously, I, it, it was just an honest thought. I was just like, why is she taking the stairs? Like, there's a ramp right there, Abuela. Like, Gotta get that last bit of cardio in. And then, of course, you know, the stairway to heaven thing hit me. And I was like, oh, so this has to be safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, there you go. That is In the Heights. Uh, the only thing that wasn't mentioned I would mention are the sentient wigs, um, which mm. is one of those. 
it's weird for me in musicals when the suspension of disbelief just goes a little bit too far for me. <laughs> You're and fine with them spontaneously I'm singing. I'm fine with everybody spontaneously yeah. breaking into song, but quit having the wigs <laughs> react. Like, that's not real. Come Everybody on. These guys. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move into keeping tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're just going to take a look at uh, something from putting together the content for the week. Uh, I have mentioned a couple of mine, so I'll go first since I already mentioned them. Um, the sunrise thing was something I researched so thoroughly, and that's where <laughs> that is where I the sin came imagine. from was the research because nice. I would find one thing and I'd be like, oh, but it could be this, and I'd be like, no, it couldn't be that. And so, yes, the earliest the sun rises in New York City is I think first week in June uh, at five twenty four is when you know the sun starts to rise. Uh, so that still really seemed too bright for me for 5.30. Like, yep. it just didn't seem like You still like have, the, like, the pink sky. And, yeah, 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 just all that tip. stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> so the other thing was this movie doesn't – it gives a couple dates, but nowhere where you can really locate where we are at the beginning mm. of this movie. So I wasn't even able to go, okay, we're actually in July, and the sun doesn't, you know, raise until a certain point, or we're in May, and it's – you know, so it could have been June. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of that – it was a real hunt, you know, to find out if there's something here, if it's argumentative. And then at the end of the day, I'm going, well, this is argumentative oh, enough yes. that I have to completely, yes. you know, And flip then at the what end. point is like, so. I have now two hours of research in. This <laughs> yeah. is going to be a this sin. This will be something. I have I will to make do something. This, something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's always it. This movie's due today. Crap. I got yeah. to get, get going. <laughs> Uh, and then the other mm. thing was in Dexter with the insert whatever words you want to. You guys have told me before uh, that you were curious in that. So I did write it down this time. I also did put in parentheses the words I thought they could leave unbleeped. Like mm -hmm. you were talking about how they you know, mm -hmm. chose to bleep yeah. certain. So like I put in parentheses like the, you know, it's like bleep bleep who should bleep the bleep out of a bleep with a bleep bleep. Right. That's kind of how it went. Mm -hmm. So what I said was... <clears throat> Night flying hamster baiter who should lick the shampoo out of a gutter hole with a giraffe tongue. Oh, that is uh, wow. amazing. That is actually what was said that there. Crazy. Wow. So, so that was amazing. Go. So was that just pure air and imagination? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That yeah. makes it even That didn't come better. from anywhere but the depths story. of my... my it's like, yeah. it's <laughs> like a bad really trip to the zoo. There, there was this one time where I had to lick the shampoo out of a gutter I was uh, thinking you went hole. to like a Mad Libs and just nice. like fucked it up yeah, really like, badly. No, no. no okay. I just was like, Those things will never stop being funny to me. Just, <laughs> yeah. it's, they're great. It's almost a cheat because it's just beep, 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 beep. Yeah. But you it's so good. In the right spot. Yes. In the right spot, it's like, nah, this is it. This is the perfect one. Absolutely. Uh, Jonathan, what about you? I don't really have anything that much. I only did Dexter this week and what we talked about. And, um, I, I, the, you know, I, I felt weird Googling like, you know, how somebody kills somebody or something like that. So, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, I, if I you word it like that. I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to be <laughs> right on the FBI. Right. I did try to look up though, cause there's a scene, there's this long scene where they're in a, a briefing and we ended up using Ian had a sin about like them just shutting Deborah down really quick and not mm -hmm. letting her. Uh, but I, but I, but I don't know, for some reason I was just Googled. I was just curious, like, how does a briefing usually go? Cause there was something about it that just, I don't know, was rubbing the wrong way, but I didn't really find anything, but I did end up because I thought I was going to find something. I read this entire like uh lesson plan on how to teach police officers how to do a briefing. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> she skipped that course. So uh, I learned how to do a briefing. Nice. But, uh, That's exciting. Actual I, education. Can you do I didn't that? Actually, can you do it now? No, no, oh, no. Okay. I didn't actually. I didn't actually find. Yeah, I took notes. So I've got it all written down. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually find anything that was helpful, but I did. It was just funny. But like, I was sort of reading it. Like, oh, maybe there'll be something down later. But then I realized about halfway through. Oh, this is like a lesson. Like this is like somebody trying to teach me how to, you know, the important steps of conducting a police. I'm program. accidentally learning. I must stop this immediately. But I did look at that. I was gonna. I was trying to figure out too about like the way he did the blood splatter and stuff at the crime scene and then that just got creepy so i quit looking at that and then uh, i yeah. did the same disappointingly that yeah. is how they do it they do yeah use yeah the well that was stuff. yeah i couldn't find I mean, that and then and then i don't know just sort of weirded me out like just like the idea of being like i don't even know how you take that job like that's your yeah. focus is blood splatter uh -huh. too yeah you know? So no. specific. Well, that was the other thing I was looking up because I was curious if that was even if like that was even a thing. Because sometimes like they'll kind of create a job. Like for instance, like uh, like Tom Hanks and those uh, the you know uh, like a symbol symbiologist, which is what 
Dan Brown's character is and the Da Vinci oh, yeah, Code and stuff. Right. Like, yeah, that yeah. doesn't exist. Like, yeah. that's not a thing. Like, there's, you know, I mean, like, there are people that teach symbols, but they would just be in, you know, broader. Yeah, they're not Indiana Jones. No, no. And, uh, you know, so I thought maybe the blood splatter thing was too specific, but no, there actually are. That's specifically mm-hmm. what those people focus on is is looking for blood splatter. It's like, that's an interesting thing to get good at. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we need them, so... It's true. Glad they exist. Mm-hmm. Hope they're not actually killing people. Ian? Um, I briefly mentioned one of them, and that was the Indexter when he has all of the, the, the software lined up for Windows, and it was just really satisfying. When I saw one of them had 98 on it, and I was like, okay, that's a one-off. <laughs> and then I checked the next one, which didn't have a date, but it did have a name. And I was like, oh, that came out in 97. Oh, this is good. And then just number three, number four, number five all came out in like 96, 97, 98. And I was like, somebody has put those there. That either they've just walked into the wrong apartment and this person, I don't know, passed away and no one's lived there for like 15 years and this stuff is just there. But that was it was very satisfying that they all came from the same year. Um, and I have a missing sin that I, I liked. And this was at the end of Dexter when... When you say missing, do you mean it was cut? It was a missed opportunity <laughs> for the video. He, he means it got wow. lost. Wow, you're it holding got, grudges. It, it ran away. Somewhere. It ran away. Oh, yeah. wow. Somebody didn't like me, so they removed my sin. And uh, it's when uh, uh, Dexter's chasing the truck and the the head comes out and hits him. And someone's line was just high beams and a flying head. And it's just a title of my sex threat tape. Um, it just is. Oh, yeah. yeah. The reason I can tell you why I did that, because we had a lot of like, it's time for please therapy. do, Jonathan, please tell me no, exactly why you don't like it. Right. Like, typically, where I'll cut is like if we have a lot going on and there's a lot of really good like sins that are kind of more unique to the. I, I tend to start cutting the the cliches like the ones that we do yeah often. The, the go-tos yeah, yeah, no, that yeah. the go-tos that totally thank you no, i was trying to think of something nicer than cliches because yeah. i know cliches not mean i guess but he just starts sending my script and saying cliche like our you standards know, like, about no. that? I, cliche. yeah like if there's kids like or, our wheelhouse yeah, yeah stuff yeah. like the that sins we can easily yeah. reach we could, for we could have a, a segment on the show just called you know bts therapy if we yeah. need for you i think i think we need it to be honest i also i feel like and i stop cutting my stuff and we won't yeah that one also was a little like that was it was gross i think it's gonna be more like <laughs> ego recalibration yes yeah, yeah like ego recalibration. but no that's that that is what i do i typically if i feel like if i feel like the script is a little too meaty i'll go in and i'll look for like the no, ones that makes sense. I, I look for ones that are too similar to each other first and then after that i'll go through and look for the go-to yeah because yeah. we can stick sex that's racist anywhere. just stuff like that yeah, i'll just true in fact that's the title of my sixth <laughs> yeah <laughs> my stick those, stick those things anywhere research was about the village bride and i already mentioned like i looked at blogs to have a better understanding of what was going on and you know there's a lot out there that just sort of hits the here's five things you need to know about this episode and it really doesn't give you a lot of new information it's just sort of like a recapping of the episode but i went to uh like a fan wiki site uh whatever and my very quick and brief keeping tabs is that i clicked on the one for the organization that put it on the uh actually i pulled up here Cinema Citrus Co. is a Japanese animation studio founded in 08. So that was the company that produced that particular episode. And when I was watching it, there was a video that was playing, as happens on most websites. Mm -hmm. And it was this really cool animation of this wiener dog that had like a little, uh, like a jet pack strapped to its back. And I was like, I am in on this. Come on. (laughs) Cinema Citrus Co.? And then I thought, this animation looks really different compared to what I just watched. Maybe they're really diverse, and this was just a style of animation that they chose for this. So, But I click on it because I want to know what this show is, and it was a, it was a dog food commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. you were describing another Lone Star Rider Cowboy, whatever that cartoon thing is that you guys keep writing. What? What's it called? Lone Star Raider? What, what is it? The, no, the, no, 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 no. Don't you do this to what me. Are, what are we talking about? Know. The cowboy. The, the singing cowboy? Oh, wait, is wait. it Lone... It's called Lone Something. No, is it? Texas I don't know. Are you talking about the guy, the singing of the cowboy in the in the in the air? No, I don't know the YouTube video thing that you show me. Lone Star Ranger. It's something like that. Don't look at me like I'm an alien. <laughs> you, I'm losing it. I mean, you literally are. But uh, you are. The, well, You're from a different place. Oh, I'm an Englishman in Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't no. either. Did we watch this in the last day? Right. I j- no, my goodness. Oh, okay. I joked that you made it just to trick me, but it's a video that you've been... <gasps> Homestar Runner. 
I said star. <laughs> Lone Star Ranger, Lone Star Runner. How, do you How did you not go that? from A to B to How that? How did we not get that Thank quicker? Thank you, sorry. Yeah, Home Star Runner. Yes, yes. it sounds yeah. like that. Yes, there it, you go. It did feel that way where Good. I was like, I'm being trolled. I was so Someone disappointed is. because I'm like, Lone this... Lone Star Cowboy. <laughs> so close. So close. So I, really, close. I really thought that I was going to find a cartoon about a wiener dog that like gained yeah. superpowers, but it was a pedigree. Was the name of the dog nice. food brand? It was a pedigree commercial. Nice. Do you have that over here? At least here, it pedigree? wasn't a Pepsi commercial. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. And that was my keeping tabs. Very nice. Nice. All right, let's head into the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're just going to take a look at uh, some comments that came our way from the week. I will mention that I got very confused by a comment. <laughs> I think we have the same one. Oh, are you going to talk about this? Oh yeah, that's the God, only one. That what I've if got. I have this one too? Is it from Dexter? <laughs> let's just talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think we it. do. That's fine. I, I'll save it because I have a, I have something else I want to okay, do. Okay, cool. But I just when we tell that story, let's, I will tell, tell you about, let's about, about let's how confused I got when I read that jump comment. Jump into it. Go. Um, Was it a very simple comment? Like yes, one yes, sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can you tell me? Well, let's just talk about it. If we all three have it, okay, okay, fine, fine. Ian, Ian, tell us, tell us. Um, some we were watching the the videos prepping for the show and together in the same together room. in the same room, yeah. which was awesome. And Aaron's just like, someone's just said that I'm the Dexter of yes, cinema Dicer sins, the TV Dexter sins, of TV, TV sins. sins. Yeah. And I was like, that's really harsh. That's so mean. <laughs> I don't get it. And like, I was like, that's really like that's come out of nowhere. And about six hours later, I go back into the com in back into the video, and I'm like, oh no, I wrote that. I said that. Aaron <laughs> yeah. is the, is, I said it's the, in the, the sins video. It's in yeah. the video. The narrator yeah. is the um. Wait, am I wait, Dexter? Am I Dexter? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so I then had to apologize. Oh, I didn't think about that. So that's where uh-huh. they put that. Uh, so confuse you too. Yeah. I'm just like. And, and, what's, and what was amazing is that somebody we know is a big fan and yeah. we've interacted with and we love. And yeah, because this would have been the Patreon yeah, video. Yeah, it was a member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a comment from a member. I'm just like, what? what? Why? 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 Why am I the Somebody Dexter? that intimately knows Aaron and his tendencies <laughs> And B, that knows and that you're like, I'm about to live with this guy for three weeks. <laughs> yeah, oh it was gosh, uncomfortable. Know I don't know. <gasps> you know what it was? We we got a notification when that comment came in, and it was like all of our emails popped off, and it was like, <laughs> Aaron is the Dexter of TV since, and we all looked at each other like, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I just I love that the ignorance, so funny. and then the six and years later, the realization of, yeah. oh no, oh, I did that. I'm we so sorry. did it. That was a prompt from the script. Yeah. If there was ever a comment we were all going to pick, it had to be. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that was mine as well. So. Oh, oh that's that really? amazing. Yep. Yeah. Well, there weren't a lot of arguments well, on the how videos. About that four that's for the first four. Time. That's, that's amazing. The. The other feedback I have was uh, something was sent to us in the mail. Oh, so, look at that. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, this comes from our friends at Twinkle Toes. Oh, uh, my God. P-A-C. Oh, yay. Yay. Uh, you may remember we talked about them a couple times. They sent a really nice email and a really nice follow-up. And didn't they clarify that the children only listen to specific <laughs> parts? Yes. I don't know that they clarified okay. that, but okay. I'm still at least assuming. Okay. I think maybe they did clarify Hello, that. Hello, children. But they sent <laughs> an absolute plethora Nice. Of t-shirts oh and uh, oh, that's amazing. Clothing what is and happening that kind of right stuff. now? So nice. We will uh, we will hand this out. Oh, uh, thank um, you. Afterwards. Oh, uh, they're like, even like bedazzled. Yeah, it's like it's twinkle toes, and then you've got like these they're, little they're bedazzled. In, in, uh, We're in gonna twinkle parts. when we wear them. Well, one of those Hell is going yeah. to England. That's gonna that's gonna be Heck taken yeah. next to some landmarks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thank you, uh, all yeah, those thank from you. Twinkle Toes. We do you appreciate guys are amazing. you. Now that we're all in the same room, I thought I could blow. Nice, and it's can, perfect. Uh, can grab one. So there you go. Uh, all right, let's move into Beyond the Sins. To infinity. And beyond! Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're just going to chat about something else from the world of pop culture that we've experienced recently. Jonathan's going to kick us off. What do you got, man? Yeah, mine is uh, 100% a Warren. I Not that it matters now, because apparently it's it's you know the most watched thing on Netflix in a day. But um, <laughs> I, watched, <laughs> I watched Red Notice. Uh, like, I, I didn't watch it till a couple days later. I watched it like on Monday, I think, because... My mom, I saw my mom the day before because my daughter had this cheer event. She came with us and uh, she was telling me that she had watched it. I I actually was thinking I wasn't even going to watch it. And then she was like, no, it's pretty good. And I don't know why that decided. Well, now I need to see it. But uh, the next afternoon or whatever, I was like, yeah, I'll watch Red Notice. I was I knew it had gotten like 
really I, I knew people didn't like it like I had seen enough on Twitter I hadn't read reviews but I knew like it wasn't getting like well good notice and I it felt like people were kind of angry about it and stuff and I, I was like okay whatever so I watched it like the first like 80 minutes or so I don't know that I liked it but I was still just kind of like oh these are just you know it's people that I kind of en- that I enjoy sometimes and they're on an mm-hmm. adventure and they're making quips and there's some decent action so I was like this is okay and then the last like 20, 25 minutes of this movie happened. And I mean, I have rarely seen a movie shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is like, I mean, like just like diarrhea, just all over the mattress. <laughs> oh, no. It's just, it, it's insane. There is a, uh, there's a, I don't care. Some people say, if you see, even say this, it's a spoiler. So if no one wants to be spoiled at all, just cut off for a few minutes. But there is a twist that happens with about like 15 minutes left or whatever. You've seen it, right? I have. You guys talked about it. On a, so there's a twist that happens. And I remember at one point, like early on in the movie, there's this weird, there's this moment where, well, there's this whole bit where the rock has to go to jail because he gets like falsely, like he gets set up. And um, there's a moment in there where I was thinking, Oh, I wonder if that means this, that would be really stupid, though. So they're not going to do that. <laughs> and then but. with about 15 minutes left, they fucking do that. I was like, no. Nice. And then there ended up being kind of another twist after yeah. that that yeah. was even worse. I mean, like, okay, for the one I always go to is Now You See Me, where you find out, and I'm sorry, I'm spoiling Now You See Me, but you find out Mark Ruffalo has been involved in this the whole time. Right, right. And it's insane. It's so fucking dumb. It makes no sense. It makes so much more sense than what happens in this movie, though, to me. Like, I thought that was, like, all of a sudden, I'm like, ooh, now you see me looking pretty good today. <laughs> um, I also will say the other thing, like, I, I don't really, I'm not, like, angry. Like, I don't really get angry. But, like, I will say The Rock is kind of disappointing me in these last few years because I feel like, I feel like he just has, maybe he just has too much control of the narratives and stuff that are going on because I'm just, I'm never surprised. Like he has these directors he always works with. They're like, they're not names that you just know. It's like this Ross, what is Marshall Thurber or whatever is the one who did this. And I think he did like skyscraper maybe. And a couple of the other ones, somebody did the Jumanji movies. Um, You know, it's like he carries these guys around in his pockets. Okay. I need you to direct this for me this year. It's kind of like how like uh, Sandler did that with like Dennis Dugan and stuff back in the mm-hmm. day. Sure. And I, it's like, I just wish like, I don't know. I just wish I was talking to Jeremy about this the other day. Like, I wish he would like, I wish some director that like does would get him to work with him and, you know, get him to do something different because early on, like stuff like the rundown and walking tall when the rock wasn't quite the big star that he is now. Like, those are the ones, like, I like, you know, but maybe it's just me because people are still watching these damn movies. So maybe I'm mm-hmm. an idiot. I don't know. But I just I just don't really care as much. Whenever I see he's in a movie now, I get so le- I'm so not interested or at least not as much as I used to be, because I just know exactly what's going to happen because he has this like story arc that he always takes his characters through. And it's just verbatim like every time and i just i don't know it'd be cool if he'd go work with like christopher nolan or somebody that would actually make him do something different kind of like clooney did when clooney went and worked with Soder- soderbergh mm-hmm. you know and soderbergh basically said like you've got like 37 ticks you're not going to do any of those you know it was mm-hmm. like some, i mean mm-hmm. there's like a story behind that i just I, I i wish he would do something like that but but maybe it's just for me and that's that's not important because clearly he's got a huge fan base but uh i really hated this movie um, especially the last 20 minutes and it's a, yeah, that's a warn. So I cannot argue with a single thing you said, but you liked it, but I did like, the movie. um, <laughs> <'Cause you laughs> love the rock. I am so that's what I'm now. saying. This is why me, me talking about the rock being so generic is on, on so many deaf ears. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, no, and it is that it's yeah. totally, I mean, it's more Ryan Reynolds than the rock for yeah. me, but it is totally, I will spend 90 to 120 minutes mm-hmm. with Ryan Reynolds. I don't even care. Oh, like I it's just him. he's yeah. so no, uh, he's fun and like I ignore so much just to like hear him do a quip. Yeah, every he's fine. Yeah. Like, he, he's fine. He, I mean, it, it it's shtick, you know, that he always has, and and the movie mm. doesn't earn a lot of it. So I mean, the movie itself just can't. I don't know. You know, it, I Ryan Reynolds is like there's like two Ryan Reynolds, and I this was still kind of the good Ryan Reynolds, but it was kind of teetering on that more like what he was in like uh, Hobbs and Shaw, which is like I you know so, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to not like Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I just yeah, I had a good time. I don't know that I bought that he was like the second best you know art thief in the in the world. <laughs> yeah, but he's a triple uh, A rated bodyguard. Why couldn't right. he be an art yeah. thief as well? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll go next. Uh, I watched a movie called The Electrical Life of Wayne. Oh, I've heard yes, of this. Yes, we did. Yeah, it, it, uh, Ian it, watched a lot of this movie with me uh, it took a as day. well. 
<laughs> it did take a full day. This is uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is mm-hmm. having quite the year mm. um, in a lot of stuff, but he is the central role here. And I think of all his performances that I've seen this year, which, by the way, let me see if I can list them. Power of the Dog is mm-hmm. one that a lot of people haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. I think that comes out on uh, Netflix uh, December 1st. You've got this one. You've got uh, The Courier that came out earlier mm-hmm. this year uh, that is also kind of uh, awards baity. And then there was one other one that he did. But of all of them, this one I think is actually his biggest performance. Mm-hmm. Like He is doing some things in this movie I have never seen Benedict Cumberbatch do, mm-hmm. and he's taking like you talk about wanting The Rock to take risks. Like mm-hmm. this is what he's doing in this this movie. Yeah. He's taking big old swings, big old risks. They work eighty percent of the time, maybe seventy percent of the time, performance wise. The movie, however, only works about twenty percent of the time, and it is the exact twenty percent at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> like, that first half hour, I was like, man, I am ready for this to be my favorite film of the decade. It's so fun, so right? So good, and, and then, then it, it just tanks. Then it just turns into something completely different, and then it turns into something completely different again, and it just never recaptures kind of the the energy that it has mm, for that first the 20, 30 minutes. Oh, interesting. Um, but, is this on Amazon or something? Yes, this is on Amazon. This is on Prime. It is a story about a true uh, mm-hmm. person and basically I'll, I'll i'll give you the heart of the story of this actual person which is which is interesting right like no, it, absolutely so the, the actual story is interesting but this person basically invented cats as pets mm-hmm. before him in his art cats were not seen as pets they, they were, were functional they yeah. were st- street animals um and so yeah in england first um he kind of made it cool to have a cat as a pet and then it kind of brought it to america um so that that is interesting but Mm -hmm. uh but the movie i don't know it's just it's trying to do too much i think and just show you his whole life and i kind of wish maybe they cheated it a little bit more and just streamlined it and Mm -hmm. you know giving you a through line because there's something that happens less than halfway into this movie that just completely shuts the movie down and it's like the movie should be over within the next 10 minutes. But oh, it's yeah, not going to like, be. It's going to be another hour and 10 minutes. We got to find out how The Rock run on it the whole time. <laughs> the whole so. time. The whole time, yeah. Did he do a movie called The Current War, Cumberbatch? Is that right? That do rings re- a bell. Because I remember when I've heard this title, I keep because it has like light or something in the title. I've already forgotten what you said now, but you didn't you say the something? electrical life. Yeah, I think of it's Lou the electrical, Wang. and I think there was a movie called The Current War. Maybe that wasn't Cumberbatch, but it was somebody, and it was pretty. It was in the last year or so, and it had to do with the invention of electricity or whatever. Was that the Tesla thingy? Maybe radar? that's what it is. So, um, so that's why I was getting that confused with that. I remember, so I had no idea that's what this was about. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, and then he's also going to be in Spider-Man. I was going to say, he, yeah. he's got Spider-Man in oh, the way home. He's been, doing, he's been doing what if, voice, <laughs> voice work and what if. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The Rock is going to be one of the Spider-Men as well. I've heard, I haven't seen Power of the Dog, obviously you have, but what I've heard is that, yes, Cumberbatch is great, but Plemons kind of just steals that movie. That wasn't my experience. Well, that's cool. Um, but but yeah, I, I yeah, Plemons is great. Everybody's great in that. Uh, let's see, Danae, what do you got? Well... I mean, of course, I came completely prepared to talk about something, <laughs> and nobody in this room had to be like, you could talk about... The thing we did 12 hours ago. <laughs> so we're all together. We're in Nashville, and Chris Atkinson is like a music, a live music lover. Something I didn't really know about him, but mm-hmm. I, I've Huge. learned over the last mm-hmm. couple of years, he really enjoys like going to concerts and stuff. I've never been that person, probably because I'm from a small town. And I just don't think about traveling three to six hours to go see a band. But I understand now is what I'm going to tell you. I Ironically, had... like this band, you wouldn't have had to travel three to six hours because they lived next door to you. This was this was an experience. I had an experience watching the live music last night. Um, so part of it could have been the venue. We went to the Ryman, which is a really famous place. Mm-hmm. And maybe they have the best PA like oh, I don't even know the acoustics, the, the, acoustics, there well, the, the acoustics are in there but then also it's not just that but the clarity of the sound that was mm-hmm. I mean that's also production that's also mm-hmm. equipment right I don't know it was phenomenal but I think what I, so it could have been that but both bands that played that I saw because we missed the first one because they're kind of like the opening bands and we were getting mm-hmm. dinner and stuff so we got there and we saw most of the set from a band called Foxing and they're from St. Louis, which is the mm-hmm. reference that Ian made, which is they're very close. And then the main headliner was was Manchester Orchestra. Yeah, orchestra. Yeah. 
I keep wanting to put symphony in there and it's not the same thing. I would never have like just purchased tickets to go see these people. So it was just like one of those things where Chris had extra tickets and invited us along. And I said, yes. And I'm glad that I did because it was really incredible. I think what I would, would, what I would say to you anytime I'm recommending music to anybody is I don't know if it's because I was in a live experience. Do you know what I'm saying? That it was mm-hmm. so good, but foxing is unexpected. I, it reminded me a little bit of Freddie Mercury, uh, you know, like watching a few scenes wow. from Queen and looking at, um, uh, his like stage presence. Yeah. Well, there was a, so I was what, researching outtakes with Queen and there was like this moment when, you know, Freddie Mercury, the scene is, you know, he's describing what he wants to do with this sort of new operatic style. And he's sort of like, I want to break rules. And that's reminds me a lot of what Foxing was doing, really breaking rules because he has he can do scream voice and falsetto and incredibly precise like hard <laughs> and then just like this operatic thing all in one song and it's really difficult to describe again live it was really mm-hmm. amazing but what was incredible about it is he was so precise with his voice he really performed well and his band was really great and that was foxing and he had band. a trumpet he did nice. play trumpet at one point in time. So that was unexpected because I don't usually go for screamer stuff, but it was paired with all this other stuff going on. It was a it was a, it was whiplash. Yeah. Delightful whiplash. And then Manchester Orchestra, which I'd never heard of before, blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Um and I would highly recommend anyone to. It's very deep lyrically. The crowd was really moved. They were singing along. They were like into it. It almost it, it was it was really in uh, intimate. And then also just this hard do, 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 do again, but paired again with this really incredible falsetto voice. And so it was delightful. And mm. I would recommend checking them out. It will not sound like it did in Ryman. And I, <laughs> I've i been listening to him on Spotify and I'm like, yeah, that's the song I heard. But that is not the song I experienced. Yeah, Ryman's, mm. a, Ryman's a good venue. I've seen a lot of people there. Yeah. There's just nothing like that drive of four electric guitars and incredibly precise drums and you can hear all of the different types of drums that are being played because the sound is so pure and perfect and this electrifying clear voice and it's just like just jolting through your body and you're in the back row it was yeah. really fucking cool right. so, yeah because that anyway. was the uh i guess that was the original place the grand Ole opry was at. i mean mm-hmm. grand Ole opry has been moved for for years but uh but the ryman's content to yep. be a be a venue for a lot of artists and stuff yeah. so uh super unexpected thing i did go and purchase foxing merch because i'm like i gotta support <laughs> this band man and how do you support a band you buy the cd even though you don't have a cd player mm-hmm. and you just get a t-shirt or whatever so yeah. i did and then i open up the cd and the it unfolds like you know how you get a little booklet with it or whatever. It unfolds into this Dungeons and Dragons th- situation. <laughs> so I didn't even know that was boxing like a mini was D character builder thing. It was it's a mini so character cool. builder, and so I was like, I I get you on a whole new level uh-huh. now, boxing. And so, this, isn't that that whole album? Isn't it about Dungeons and Dragons? Did it all tie in? I don't know. I don't know because I haven't listen. listened to the whole uh-huh. album before. So, like Coheed and Cambria, they all kind of intertwine. Yeah, I gotta buy a Just CD player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you have like a if you have like a DVD or Blu-ray player, though, you could. Well, do it. I, I but they don't do it on computers anymore, right? You don't get disc drives anymore. I could listen to the music on Spotify exactly. right now. Exactly. You're but I literally them. bought it just yeah. to. Because I just want to make sure well, they got a keepsake at that point. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a, lot, a lot of physical media now. Yeah. Is, is pretty much display and keepsake. And I think just... I'll probably so the insert. It like triple folded and then double folded back in on itself. So I'll probably just, you know, pin it up on a wall because it's sort of a neat little piece of artwork yeah. where it has a little D&D-esque style to it. And when I pulled it out, I was like, oh, this is like D&D. It's like a D&D character without realizing that they actually had it. It was it is a description of a, of a subclass of Dungeons and Dragons. It was fun. Yeah, and yeah cool. Fun. Anyway, uh, Foxing and Manchester. Ian, finish us off. I had a uh, 12 hour flight, so I managed to watch three movies. Everyone was like, Oh, you, what are you going to do for 12 hours? And I was like, Same thing I do every day, Pinky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch some movies. So I watched uh, Nobody, The Wrath of Man, and uh, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. So there's a bit of a triple <laughs> bill of action. I was pumped by the end of it. Uh-huh. But I'm going to talk about my favorite, which was Nobody. Um, I really love this format of film. Um, so it's got a lot of taken vibes, but 
I I actually prefer it over Taken. Um, it's a lot grittier. It's Bob Odenkirk, who you would not peg as this role if you've seen him play Saul Goodman. Um, he, he doesn't necessarily get super beefy, but I I just love it when action films are shot where you can see the action. Now, that sounds pretty simple, but it's bloody rare. Um, there's not a lot of jump cuts. Um He's a reluctant... I, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with his motivations as to why he decides to start kicking all of the butt again, other than everyone seems to be judging him for not using his skills to defend his family after a burglary. That's the the, mm-hmm. the gist of it. But when this gets into the action um, and the grittiness and his one-man army ridiculousness, it's so good. It's just fun. It's like an hour and... It's an hour and a half. It's such an easy time commitment as well. Um... But I loved it. I just one of those films I'd pop on again. Super I still need to see it. What do you think of Wrath of Man? Oh man, I went in spoiled by the gentleman because that was that's probably my favorite Guy Ritchie film, and this is I think his follow up to it. To um, what? Uh, the gentleman. Oh, the gentleman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked last year. Too. I think it's so good. This is much slower. It's still got Guy Ritchie all over it and Jason Statham, but it's bloody miserable. Um, and the the story itself is miserable. Oh man, I um, loved it. It, for, yeah, I don't know. I think it had some pacing issues. I fight, like the story. Fight, fight, <laughs> no, fight. No, no, I no, no, fight. Like, no, that I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, that's that's still to the to today as of today, it's my favorite movie of 2021. Mm. Um, I haven't had it beat yet, but uh, I, I didn't dislike it. Um, no, I know, the, but I mean, the, I, the I pacing mean, was just the pacing was a bit off for me. It was a weird stay from role. Like he's really subdued, which I kind of like. Yeah, and it's a very different. It's not your typical Guy Ritchie movie. No, it's not. And I think that's what I got a bit. I'm. St- I was waiting for some. Maybe if I watch it again, I'll have a different opinion. But I was waiting for something punchier because it's you, a pretty standard heist film. Because you said you thought it might be it. his best film, right? I Richie? think it is his best film. Yeah. Um, I mean, I on, agree. On a like, if you're going to start talking objective level, yeah, cinema mm-hmm. kind of stuff, which I'm always very careful with because that's not how art works. Mm-hmm. But uh, as you start breaking stuff down, I I think it's it's more nuanced than anything he's ever uh, <laughs> done before. I read so. I read a review that somebody said something like you know it's not your typical Guy Ritchie film when there's a character named Bullet and it's not the one played by Jason State. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I yeah. think it was the, the, the Christopher Nolan time stuff that got to me a little bit. It jumped around... And it shows you scenes from different perspectives, mm-hmm. which is important, yeah, I and I can know, see it. But I don't know what you call that kind of heist movie, but I really dig that kind of. I, but I don't know what you call that. I just the way I don't know. I, I yeah. just, the plan's I kind dug. of being described as yeah, it's happening. I don't know. I yeah, just, I dug it. Man. I just it, I feel like it should have hit like me. Den of Thieves kind of falls under that. No, I love Den of Thieves. Yeah, love that to bits. Um, Heat. Yeah. I maybe need to see it not on a cramped airplane no, no, no. I mean, in the it, middle of a flight. I mean, you're not going to... I mean, people disagree. Hmm. That is uh, The Wrath of Man, a little bonus review, but nobody... Oh, yeah. Uh, but nobody, sorry. nobody sorry. Really sorry. is the Beyond the Sins, mm-hmm. uh, which is available to rent at all major platforms. Uh, Manchester Orchestra is live music that you can check out. And I think they're touring right now. And they are touring right mm-hmm. now. Uh, so probably, I guess that's... Not, it, it's not always with the same opening bands, so but it might it be. It might so not be, but so so is. Foxing, um, their newest album, Manchester Orchestra, actually uh, helped to produce it. Oh, so nice. they're pretty they're pretty tight together as far as you know, like supporting each other stylistically. So they probably and everything. are touring. So I'm assuming then. that they'd be imagine. touring together. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, the Electrical Life of Louis Wayne is on Amazon Prime, and Red Notice is on. Netflix. That's going to wrap it up for Behind the Scenes this week. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. If you've got anything you want to send us, like, you know, t-shirts, whatever, mm-hmm. mail it to P.O. Box 881, Republic, Missouri, 65738. You can hang out with us on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Dicer. He is at Witsend. At W-H-I-T-T-S-I-N-N-E-D. She is at Danae Says. D-E-N-E-S-A-Y. I can't even, like, I can't even see the wave fly. <laughs> <was so quiet. laughs> D-E-N-E-E-S-A-Y-S. Uh, and he is uh, at Sam Loomis 13. So for Jonathan Watkins, Ian Whittington, Danae Hughes, a night flying hamster baiter, and myself, we will see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. Or, 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 happy Thursday. Yeah, so either way. Either way it works. Talk to you today. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to bts at cinemasins.com. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash bts. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just just throw that microphone into your face, Danae. That did not have any tension in the arm at all. It was just immediately like a face punch. You're the coolest one of us. How's that? It's just true. Oh, okay. I, that's sad. There doesn't have to be any evidence to... <laughs> that I feel way worse for all three of you than I did before I walked into this room. Can you get excited about something? Oh, my God! Okay, Jonathan. Ah! <laughs> there's, a new, uh, there's a new drinking rule. Uh, take a drink when Ian uses his high-pitched voice. Oh, when I get really mad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that happened a lot last week. I got Wait, really mad about something. What's your high-pitched mad voice? It just doesn't make sense. Like, what do they do with him? It just doesn't matter. The crown sucks. Yeah. <laughs> what were you getting mad about? Oh, it could have been Star Trek. It seems likely. Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> Work in retail in a mall. I always remember that. that uh, what was that one? It's like, happy holidays, happy, happy holidays. holidays. It's like Bing Crosby or somebody. I don't the know, Dean Martin. Bells keep ringing. Oh, my God. No, thank you. Just over and over. Do you? I wonder if malls. I wonder if malls still do that. I wonder if malls no, still do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, the same, it's the same song. From uh, basically November the 1st, Toys R Us was all Christmas songs. All Christmas you songs. You still have Toys R Us? No, no, no. Oh. So this is when I worked for them like six years ago. So yeah, most of the went, buildings are still they there. They went completely out here. Or yeah, I don't they're know, gone. A few years ago. It's they been tried a while. to reboot, but yeah. I mean, it, it was. I, that's where we got like diapers and stuff because we found out if you went there on Sunday morning during when most people were in church, there was no one there. And my wife and I are heathens. So nice. Nice. There you go. So you could go in and get your diapers and your formula and then you get the hell out of there. Ironically, that's what church is for too. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't formula. No, mm -hmm. getting the hell out of there. Oh yeah, it is. Yes, it's it is. true. I'm leaving. Ah, <laughs> uh, Christmas. And that's... Yeah, one, one person has to stay on the low one. Oh, okay, that's it, that, to that. build it. Oh, or it's key changing. You went up again. Ding dong ding dong. And then, like three days after that, I fly to Ireland, which is no like time difference, but yeah, I'm barely. What island you fly into? Ireland. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Uh, my new trainer out of nowhere the other day was like, you got this big dog? And I was like, oh, oh yeah. Big um, dog, huh? But that that is like a term though, right? Like yeah, that's a yeah. choice. I think it's meant to pump you up, you know, kind of like <laughs> yeah. get you excited. But Aaron's not that person. Aaron's the one that if you call him a nickname, he'll stop and he'll look you in the eyes and yeah. say, hey, I'm Aaron and I prefer <laughs> if I you know use my actual name. Yeah. You gotta earn nicknames. Mm -hmm. uh, but Roll you know, I dice. feel like when you work out, they kind of give you nicknames because they're trying to pump you up. Yeah, well, but yeah. it's not unique. If it was unique, that'd be one thing. Do you like if it used my name in a unique way? So if like the person came in after you and you know you're like toweling off, <laughs> and you heard him say "big dog" to the next guy, you'd you be like, really "That's cheap. <laughs> that's mine." Uh, right? No, that's what special. I'm saying. If, yeah. if you're just throwing out the same nickname you use for everybody, then yeah, yeah. What's the point? You should probably stop going to the gym barking. That might help. Yeah, that might help. That might be. Or bark when he calls you big dog, which will deter him. <laughs> just to He'd make him feel love awkward. It. He'd be like, yeah, get and it. You're just like, get it, big dog. Less chihuahua, more Rottweiler. Maybe if I, maybe if I, much better. Maybe if I bit him. I would not. Uh-huh. No, no. Let's, let's let him. Oh, okay, <laughs> good.